It's the household tech we're told makes our lives easier and safer. But does it? The more devices you have in your house, potentially the more vulnerable you are, the more chances are that one of those devices has got a big security problem. Tonight, we reveal the hidden dangers in this so-called smart technology. <laughs> As we uncover how products designed to protect are being hacked. These devices are made by companies that haven't put enough effort or thought into the security. We meet a couple who had no idea they've been watched by thousands of strangers online. Oh my gosh. Unbelievable, isn't it? You seem really shocked, Jean. Oh gosh. And many others being watched are children. What we're seeing here is truly terrible. It's a gross invasion of privacy. We live in an era of technological change. Our cars are getting smarter. Turn on the kettle. And everything from our kettles okay. to our curtains can work remotely. Now that we've high-speed broadband in four out of every 10 UK homes, many of us are replacing traditional household appliances with smart products connected to and controlled via the internet. Collectively known as the Internet of Things, these connected devices are designed to simplify the way we use our technology. From using our phones to switch on our heating to keeping a watchful eye on home security. In every household across the UK, there are at least 10 internet connected devices. This figure is expected to rise to more than 420 million products being used across the country by 2020. But at a time where we're supposedly entering a cyber cold war, Cyber security officials have issued an unprecedented joint alert warning that Russian hackers are actively seeking to hijack... Could the trust that we've put in our technology be putting us at risk? Right where we feel most secure, in our own homes. Alexa, turn on the kettle. OK. Charlotte and Ben think they've got the ultimate smart home. Alexa. Set the heating to 21 degrees. The heat set to 21. Filled with the latest smart gadgets. Most of the everyday devices here have one thing in common. They're connected to the internet by the couple's wireless router. As far as smart home devices are concerned, what have you got all together? Well, the lights, uh, the TVs, the kettle, the blinds curtains and the heating house oh and the heating and there's more other gadgets are connected to charlotte and ben's voice controlled assistant she does our lights she turns the tv on she can turn the kettle on she can close the curtains a lot of it does come in useful as well as it being convenient it's also good for security it makes it look like someone's home and especially when we had a newborn having your hands full being able to control most of your household devices, especially the lights and the curtains and the TV, in the middle of the night whilst you're feeding a baby was really, really handy. But does all this convenience come with a catch? Outside their house, in this kitted up camper van, are cyber security experts who will test how secure this smart technology is. Big businesses hire these guys to deliberately hack their systems and expose any vulnerabilities. Ken, how are you going to get into this house? Well, we're going to try and hack their Wi-Fi. And the household has told us which one was there, so we don't accidentally hack the wrong house. Once we've done that, we then need to look for their wireless encryption key, their password that protects everything. The homeowner has very wisely, they've changed it to the one written on the back of their router. Good idea. But it still isn't quite strong enough. We gave our team a list of the couple's products and the number of characters in their password. The hack could be carried out without this, it would just take longer. Their aim is to intercept the messages between the couple's router and their devices. 
Even using a laptop like this, we could crack it in about 40 minutes, but using professional grade equipment like we have in our data center, we could crack it in less than a second. So now you've got that information, what could you potentially do with that? Well, we're on your wireless network. We're you. So now we can see what you're doing and exploit people's smart tech to steal their identities, get loans in their name. And there have been cases of hackers driving around, stealing people's Wi-Fi network keys and then hacking their bank accounts. It might be someone on the street, it might be a neighbour. Now Ken has managed to hack their router, he has a direct path to many of Charlotte and Ben's devices. We've had a, a few hours to start looking and we found lots of really interesting things. So how's about we turn on the TV? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Hello, Ben. I'm watching you. So we found a way of uh, using one of the functions on your TV to send arbitrary images to it. Mm -hmm. Say you were sitting here on your own of an evening and you, and you switched that on and that happened. I would be terrified, <laughs> you know, especially as a woman, if I was in by myself. Yeah. I'd be straight on the phone to Ben, telling him to come home. Like many families, you've got an Alexa, Amazon Echo, which is great. I love it. You can use it to control stuff remotely. But because we can send audio, an arbitrary content from your TV, we can tell your Alexa to do stuff. Alexa, close the downstairs curtains. OK. Oh, my crikey. <laughs> Spooky. That would really freak me out if I was at home by myself one night and they started closing and opening spontaneously. But even more alarming is that our team could now start spending Charlotte and Ben's money. Alexa, order me an iPad. It's £273.76 total. Would you like to add to basket? <laughs> no. <laughs> so you could be out. The TV could start ordering stuff. Yeah. And that could cause all sorts of problems with credit card charges. Indeed. Yeah. Especially yeah. if we weren't here when the delivery came. Yes. And sign for it with a courier, and all of a sudden, That's product's scary. gone. Yeah. 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 I think I would worry that there was someone sat outside and that physical presence is then also quite frightening. And there's more. Our team took control of the smart kettle, lights and wireless printer. <laughs> All of this was possible because of a weak router password. A truly strong one should be made up of random letters, numbers and symbols. Now you've heard what you've heard, are you going to be changing your router password? Yes, I think so. It could definitely do with being uh, a bit more secure. Um, it's going to be the, uh, my job for tonight, I think. With so many devices, Ben needs a strong password. If you don't change your wireless key on your router, it's too easy for hackers to crack that key. The more devices you have in your house, potentially the more vulnerable you are. The more chances are that one of those devices has got a big security problem. The more toys, the more things that you want to control, the more opportunity there is for malicious individuals to try and manipulate your house. The threat level at the moment is high for cyber security, for hacking. We expect it to remain high for some time, probably indefinitely. Um, so there's no getting away from that. We want people to enjoy the benefits that the Internet of Things can offer, um, but we do recognise there are risks, considerable risks, and we need to manage those risks in a way that consumers can get the benefits in a safe environment. So we've already seen cases of nation states attacking others through their smart devices. We've seen attacks against Ukraine, against their power system, but exactly the same sort of attacks could happen through consumer smart devices. The more smart tech we put in our houses, the more potential there is. But what drives a criminal hacker? Cal Leeming was the youngest person ever to be convicted of hacking in the UK at just 12 years old. He spent some of his early life in prison for a range of online fraud offences. Now, in his 30s, he's turned his life around, aiding businesses around the world. You've got some who do it for knowledge, you've got some that do it for power and control, others that do it for financial. Right now, you can go and buy every single tool you need to go and build a criminal online empire. 
And in a world where we're so desperate to tell everyone everything, it is possible to use completely legal routes to gain information on those we want to hack. We put out online so much information about ourselves combined with what is out there available from companies that have been hacked, for example, passwords. So if you've got a list of where people have been on holiday, their kids' names, photos, all these kind of stuff, and then you've also got a list of their passwords and then phone numbers and emails, you can gain access to almost anything related to that person. You can use it to go and gain access to their bank accounts. And once you've got access to someone's email, it, it's pretty much game over from there. In March, the protection of our information was thrown into question when it was revealed data from 87 million Facebook users could have been taken and used without permission. But data isn't just lifted by social media, it's also sucked up by some of those smart gadgets we bring into our homes. As consumers, we tend to not realise or even just forget that this data is, is really valuable to both attackers and to companies. Uh, there's all sorts of ways our data can be used uh, that we don't quite realize. A new law which comes into effect on the 25th of May throughout Europe is designed to strengthen our data rights. It's known as the General Data Protection Regulation and will make companies responsible if the information they hold on you is leaked to third parties without consent. If there's a leak of any data, they could face multi-million pound fines. People's personal data needs to be more secure. They need to have the freedom to own their own data and across Europe, there is the General Data Protection Regulation, which is coming into force across the European Union. The legislation we're passing, you know, enables Britain to take advantage of certain um, changes that we can make, tailoring it to our own needs as a country. Um, but uh, that will reinforce people's data rights. As our homes have got smarter, so too have our cars. Of the top 10 models sold in the UK last year, eight can use keyless entry systems. Keyless technology isn't anything particularly new. You have a fob instead of a key, and when you're in close proximity, the car automatically opens. And with many newer models, this technology comes as standard. The ignition's just a button, making the key a thing of the past. It's easy to see why this appeals. However, with this desire to save consumers extra seconds, vehicle security may be at risk with technology that can be hacked. I've come to Thatcham Research Centre, a not-for-profit facility set up by the motor insurance industry to test the safety and security of cars. Manufacturers seem to be very keen for us to buy keyless cars. Why is that? So the keyless systems are really convenient. So manufacturers call them different things, but what we're really talking about is systems where you have a key fob, you don't even have to press the button, you just put it in your pocket, approach the car, you get in, press the start button, you drive away. Yeah, so they're the benefits. What about the downside? Does it make us as drivers more vulnerable to theft and security? Well, there is a vulnerability that we found with, uh, with keyless entry systems where the signal can be essentially boosted um, to increase the range, and that's what criminals are taking advantage for. But it is a vulnerability. So, so what has gone wrong? Criminals can use a piece of equipment that can pick up the signal from the key, another piece of equipment by the car, which basically fools the car into thinking the key is right next to it. So by intercepting a signal, as you can see here, a thief can open a car door, disable any alarms and switch the engine on, all in a matter of minutes. They don't even have to break into the house. They are actually standing outside of the house um, because they can pick up the signal through the wall. Up until recently, car crime had been in decline, thanks in part to improved security systems. But in 2016, more than 85,500 cars were stolen. 
This was a rise of 30% across three years. So how quickly do you reckon you could get into this car? So if I lock the car now, I can show you. Using kit that can be bought online for just a few hundred pounds, Richard is going to show me how quick it can be to steal a keyless car. He won't need to touch the fob, he just needs to be near it. So we've hung it up several metres away. Ten seconds to break into a car that well, it's worth probably 50 grand or more. I can't believe that, actually. I couldn't believe it. In reality, it generally takes a bit longer for the criminal to find where the key is in the house. So you're probably talking about a minute or two minutes, but still, it's not a very long time. And it's not just for this brand. That applies to most keyless entry cars, yeah? That's right. This applies to any car with keyless entry system. Although police figures don't specifically record whether keyless entry has been used to steal a car, a freedom of information request by Panorama shows the steep rise of car crime in parts of the UK since 2015. In North Wales, it's gone up by 20%. In Staffordshire, 74%. In Hertfordshire, an astonishing 88% increase. In the West Midlands, police have had similar issues. I think the keyless technology is the single biggest contributor to car theft. Suddenly we've seen, here in the West Midlands, nearly doubling of the number of thefts. So I have a real concern now. Uh, that many vehicles are so easily stolen by simple devices that can be bought on the internet. There are 32 million cars on the road and the researchers at Thatcham think around 350,000 of those are using keyless technology. Here we see some footage from a security camera from a drive of a house in Birmingham. And you can see the one guy on the left there now is trying to pick up the signal from the car key that's been left inside, probably in the hall. He's found the signal. You can see the, the flashes go on the, the car. He's ready to drive it off. That's taken about 20 seconds to steal that vehicle. Some models do let you switch keyless off, but David Jameson wants manufacturers to invest more profits into better security. The manufacturers have been saying things like, oh, their cars are safer than ever. Well, tell that to the people who've had their cars stolen. If we've had a doubling of thefts in our area alone, and, and we've seen it across the country, uh, a big increase in car theft, that cannot be true. So I think they're partly in denial, uh, but they're going to have to do something about it. And what I will be doing in the next few months is actually publishing lists of cars that are stolen so the consumer can then make up their mind. Until more car manufacturers take action, classic security solutions could be the answer. This is where the manufacturers should be helping. Of those vehicles they made some years ago, they should be providing the old-fashioned all-wheel steering lock so when somebody parks up, they put that on. That actually puts another quarter of an hour, possibly, on the time of a theft needs to take place. Most of the thieves will be put off by that, so it'll make the car relatively safe. As smart technology in cars has left some motorists vulnerable to theft, many of the smart devices we use in the home are equally exposed. That's because most need a login account to access them remotely. Some come with their own default username and password, but often those are weak and we're advised to change them. However, our researchers found many can't be changed, and that's particularly the case for some security cameras. These devices are made by companies that haven't put enough effort or thought into the security. So they end up getting exploited by people who want to take advantage. So they've gone and bought it off the shelf and the instruction manual says, plug it in, make this change on your, on your router and then you'll be able to access your camera from anywhere. What people don't realize is the moment you make that change, you're actually introducing a huge security hole into your home network, and that anyone can just go and exploit these cameras. 
there are websites that scan the internet hunting for vulnerable devices. Searching just one of these sites, we found nearly 75,500 smart devices around the world that use the word password as their default login. 1,200 of these were being used right here in the UK. So with one simple click, you can find every camera that uses password as the password. These are devices people bought thinking they'd make their homes and families more secure, and their owners appear blissfully unaware they're being watched by strangers around the world. It actually makes for very uncomfortable viewing. There's page after page on here of people's driveways, there's kitchens, I can see gardens, even bedrooms. The websites hosting some of the cameras list their geographical location as well as the affected models. But by far one of the most disturbing things we found being streamed online across the world were the cameras being used as baby monitors. A lot of baby monitors now are fitted with cameras so they can be checked on a mobile phone, sending alerts if they detect any movement or sound. But once again, where the custom account settings haven't or can't be changed, they've been left exposed on sites like this. What I'm looking at right now is a baby monitor in the northeast of England. And what's more is I can actually hear them as well because the device has a microphone and here we've got another this time a child in their bedroom in South Wales but what's most troubling is that both of these cameras can be looked at any time of night or day by anyone across the world on one device belonging to a family we witnessed a parent changing their child in full view of the camera Hi, my name's Fiona. I'm calling from the BBC's Panorama programme. With so many unwitting victims, we tracked some of them down to tell them they were being watched. We found on a website which streams insecure smart devices footage of your child's bedroom. This parent who didn't want to be identified had no idea their child was being live streamed online. Understandably, they were horrified by our findings and switched off the cameras. Hello? Oh, hi, is that Alan? This is. Oh, hi, Alan. Um, this is Alan and his wife, Jean. They fitted their property in Leeds with what they thought were smart cameras to keep an eye on their home. But they weren't the only ones checking in. Thousands were spying on them. They were so shocked with what we'd found, they agreed to meet me. When we moved over here, somebody broke into my shed and took a bike. So I realised it would be a good idea to have some more cameras outside. So I put two more cameras up, better quality ones, which uh, enabled me to see in more detail what was going on. Alan uses seven cameras in his home, all with remote access. Jean, did you feel safer with all these cameras everywhere? I'm not a person that feels threatened anyway, so I just let him get on with it. But he went away for a, a week or two and I was here on my own. So I think then I thought to myself, well, that's good, you know. Cal Leeming examined the cameras to see how many times they'd been viewed by third parties. And it's a frightening figure. Since 2015, your camera has been viewed nearly 5,000 times. Oh, no. As much as that? In 70 different countries. Mm, quite oh a lot. Oh, my gosh. That's unbelievable, isn't it? You seem really shocked, Jean. Oh, gosh. Across these 70 countries, Alan and Jean's cameras had been accessed for a total of 366 hours. 
The longest viewing was in France, which lasted for nine hours. I think it's definitely pointed us to having everything really screwed down, um, starting with better passwords. That's my next project. Alan, you're sacked. <laughs> <laughs> But Alan and Jean aren't alone. Panorama found thousands of cameras being streamed online. Whilst intrusive, it's not illegal. CCTV cameras inside a school in Nicaragua. A public swimming pool in Poland. And a children's nursery in America. You'd assume that accessing these sites would be against the law, but actually it isn't. As long as the people using these websites don't log into the camera or alter the settings of the devices they're watching, it doesn't legally constitute hacking. We showed our footage to Margot James. What we're seeing here is truly terrible. It's a gross invasion of privacy, and it's incredibly voyeuristic, isn't it, to be watching someone just going about their daily life. And if you have the slightest concern about the security of something as important as a baby monitor, then, you know, to, to go back to something which is not internet enabled would be my choice. Um, you know, if that were my child, without a doubt. So, what can be done? As this is about more than getting people to change their passwords, the government's issuing a new code of practice. Called Secure by Design, it aims to ensure smart devices have better built-in security. The key companies involved in making and selling them will be told they must be harder to hack and that customers must be better informed. The new code will apply to four groups. The manufacturers that make the devices, such as smart kettles and digital assistants, the likes of Bosch and Amazon. The companies that provide the internet networks, such as BT and Virgin, and cloud storage, such as Apple and Google. App developers, so the people who are designing the apps on our phones that control smart devices. And retailers, the stores on the high street and online who are selling smart products. But the code is only voluntary and it's not due out until next year. Certainly things that people can do as of now um, is check the passwords. Is the device or the manufactured good that you've bought, does it have the facility to change the password? If it does, change it. Check your router. Um, there are things that can be done as of now. Right now, if a company discovers a security issue in one of their products, all they have to do is end of life that product. That, do, that means they stop manufacturing it. It doesn't mean it's going to stop getting sold. Right? But then they, don't, they have no obligation to then go and fix those problems to make sure that consumers are protected. Yeah? How is that not illegal? It is maddening. So far, none of the big name manufacturers have said whether they intend to sign up to this code of practice. For now, it's up to consumers to keep themselves safe and hope it isn't too late. There's a panorama special on Wednesday at 9, taking a look at our under pressure police force. Starting now over on BBC Two, Heart Transplants A Chance To Live. But next here on BBC One, sharing is definitely caring. <laughs>